let us start this chapter called light it is a very very interesting chapter and very very fun chapter to learn so as we always do with each of a chapter this chapter as well is divided into a set of videos which you can see them in sequence to understand all about light so this video in this video we'll be talking about mirror image we'll be talking about the construction of ray diagram for reflection so let's start this chapter so let us start with understanding light and how do we see things it is very important that we understand how do we see things to understand what is coming what a, what more things will come in this chapter so how do we see things for us to see something the light must enter our eyes our eyes is a sense of organs which detect light so if you want to see something the light must be entering the eye now two things to understand the sun the lamp the laser even the glowing tv screen they are emitting their own light they are the source of light themselves similarly your laptop screen is emitting its own light they are called luminous the light from these objects are coming it is entering your eyes so therefore you can see them but how about the objects which are not emitting their own light for example this pen in my hand for example the table the chair so many other objects in your room they are not producing light but still you see them why answer this question if you answered it's because they reflect the light yes you are right so that's what the third point is however most objects are non luminous we can see them because daylight or other lights bounce from them they reflect light and some of these object get into our eyes they reflect the light and these reflected light enters our eyes and therefore we can see them so this is a very basic understanding which will help us understand all about mirrors before we start talking about mirrors to find the image of an object we need to understand a few technical things so here on the screen we are going to talk about some of the fundamental technical things called the normal the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection so let us start one by one say that you are given a mirror say that you are given a mirror as in here this black thick line polished line is the surface of a mirror So what is the normal the first things first that you need to understand if you need to find the image of an object is the normal it is a straight line at right angle to the mirror it is a straight line at right angle so let us understand how the normal would look like that's how the normal would look like this black line that you see on the screen is your normal let's call it so we are going point by point we have understood the first bullet point which is the normal if you read the statement a straight line at right angle to the mirror this angle has to be right angle 90 degrees and nothing else second point the angle of incidence so let us understand the angle of incidence it is the angle between the incident ray and the normal so let us draw incident ray a uh, incident ray is a ray of light which is incident which is falling on the mirror so let us draw the incident ray the red line that you see here that has appeared on the screen that's your incident ray so let us name this ray this is called your incident and where is the angle of incidence which is called i small i it is the angle between the incident ray and the normal this is your angle of incidence now the last thing on the screen to understand the last point on the screen to understand is the angle of reflection small r it is the angle between the reflected ray and the 
normal. So let us draw the reflected ray now. The green line that you see on the screen is your reflected ray. Let us name the reflected ray. That's your reflected ray. And where is the angle of reflection? It is between the normal and the reflected ray. Be careful, many students make this mistake during the examination. They write the angle of incidence as this. Please be careful, this is wrong. Angle of incidence is not between the mirror and the incident ray. It is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. Similarly, the angle of reflection is not here. No, it is wrong. No, it is wrong. The angle of reflection is between the normal and the reflected ray. This is correct. Please be careful. Many students make this mistake. This is a very tiny and a error kind of error which can be easily remembered and avoided in the examination. Both the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are measured with the normal, not with the mirror. Please to understand and remember this thing always. I have already given a completed picture here with all the labels the incident ray the reflected ray the normal the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection clearly shown here on this picture all right so let us proceed with understanding few more technical things the law of reflection very very important whenever a ray of light gets reflected whenever reflection happens there is a law which always holds true. The angle of incidence which is I should be always equal to the angle of reflection which is R. The law of reflection tells us that I is equal to R. If you look here in the picture as well, the angle which is here, angle of incidence should always be equal to the angle of reflection and please do remember both the angles are measured with the normal. All right, so let us proceed. How do we find the image of a point object? Let us understand this, this few small technical thing. How do you find the image of a point object? Now, what is a point object? This is a very, very small basic thing that we need to understand before we start understanding about the mirrors in general. What is a point object? Let us understand what is an object. Let us ignore the point object for a time being and let us talk about object. What is object? Can you give example of some objects? You yourself can be an object. Your pen is an object. Your book is an object. Table, chair, your lamp, everything is an object, right? But here, to simplify things, in physics, because you are just at the basics of learning light, we are starting with the most basic object that you can think of. Chair is a complex shape, your pen is a complex shape, right? So what could be the most basic thing that you can think of? A point, right? I am drawing here a red point. A red point I have drawn here. It's a, it's a point. All right. So if we talk about this point being an object, this is called a point object. So we'll start learning about reflection by finding the image of a point object. Point is the simplest kind of the object that you can think of. So what do you see on the screen? On the screen, you see that there is a point object point object O. You see a green point here. You are finding its image in the mirror. The mirror is a standing mirror. You are finding its image, a green image. Most simple kind of the object rather than taking a chair or a table or any flower or any leaf as the object, you are taking the most simplest object, the point object and you are seeing its image in the mirror. So how do you find the image of a point object? There are steps to it. So here you see a construction of some rays. These are called your ray diagram. 
will understand how to do the ray diagram point by point as we proceed through the video. So how do you start? You start by constructing two incident rays from that point object. If you see from that point object, two incident rays are coming. They fall on the mirror and they get reflected. They get reflected and the reflected ray of lights, they're entering your eyes. Only when the light enters your eyes, you see the image. But where is the image? If you can extend the reflected rays beyond behind the mirror as dotted lines. These are your dotted lines here, which I'm pointing with my pointer Y because these are imaginary lines. That's for your construction work, your rough construction work that you'll do with pen and paper to find the image. These are imaginary construction lines. That's why these are dotted lines. Where is the real light? The real light is at the solid lines. The real light is at the solid lines. The light is not coming at these dotted lines. These are your imaginary construction work. So to this person who is looking at the mirror, it looks like to him that the ray of lights, these two ray of lights are coming from this image, are coming from this point, which we call as the image. So as we started this video and we said that you see an object only because the light enters your eyes. So here if you see, the light is entering the eyes, but the reflected light are entering the eyes, but the eyes perceive that the light is coming from this point which is behind the mirror, which is actually the image. So how do we find the image of the point object? This whole picture that you see here might, might look like quite complicated to you at this point of time because you do not understand the construction of ray diagrams. But we'll be talking about it in the next slide and everything will make sense to you. So let's get started with it. It's a simple process. A few steps are involved in, this, in that process and you'll understand it. Everything. Steps for the ray diagram. What are we given here? We are given an object which is a point and let us call the object as O. You are given a mirror. So first things first, draw the mirror and mark the object as point O. So what is our objective here? Our objective here is to find the image of this point. This point which is called O, you have to find the image of this point. So let's get started. It is a, just a four step process. Please do remember it is a four step process. The first set of steps is called set one. So what do we do in set one? Set one, you draw the incident rays. So you'll be starting with drawing two incident rays. Two incident rays, let's call them I1 and I2. Draw incident ray I1 and I2 from the object. These two incident rays should start from the object O. So that's how it will look like. Two incident rays I1 and I2, they both are emerging from the object and they are hitting the mirror at two separate points. Two separate points. Now what is the second step? Second step is also easy. In the second step you are going to draw the normal Second step, which is also called set 2, draw normals, draw the normal N1 and draw another normal N2. But where do you draw the normal? Do you draw the normal here, 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 where? So that's the question mark. Where do you draw the normal? You draw the normal at the point where the incident rays are hitting the mirror. So you'll draw the normal at this point and this point. So how do the two normals look like? That's how the two normals look like. Normal N1 and N2 drawn at the point where the two incident rays are hitting the mirror. Normals are perpendicular to the mirror. All you have to do is to draw perpendicular lines. N1 and N2 should be perpendicular to the mirror. If you see, normal N1 is corresponding to the incident ray I1. 
incident ray I1 coming here and the normal N1 is drawn for the incident ray I1. Similarly, normal N2 is drawn for the incident ray I2. So, what should be the next step? Logically, if you are saying that the next step should be to draw the reflected ray, you are 100% correct. So, the next step which is a set of steps which we call set 3 is to draw the reflected rays. Draw the corresponding reflected ray R1 and R2. So, let us draw the reflected rays R1 which is corresponding to I1, the red ray of light which is coming and hitting the mirror all the way is getting reflected as R1, I1 and R1. How do you draw the reflected rays? All you have to do is to measure this angle. All that you will have to do will be to measure this angle I1 and R1. You have to make sure that I1 should be I1 should be equal to R1. Right? You have to make sure that these two angles should be equal and that's how you'll get R1. Similarly, you'll have to make sure that I2 should be equal to R2. That's our law of reflection. I2 should be equal to R2. So that's the principle that you'll use. You'll use the law of reflection that whenever the reflection happens, the angle of incidence should be equal to the angle of reflection. So how do you draw the reflected rays? First, you'll calculate, use your protractor. You'll have to bring your protractor here. You'll have to measure I1 and I2. That same measurement of angles, you'll have to draw on the opposite side of the normal. And therefore, finally, you'll get your reflected rays R1 and R2. I hope this should all make sense to you. The three steps for the construction ray diagram are understood. The step one is two incident rays. Step two are the two normals. Step three are the two reflected rays. This part, upper part of the mirror working, everything is done. Now we'll do something at the other end of the mirror. We'll do some imaginary things behind the mirror. Behind the mirror is nothing. You have your wall behind the mirror. Everything that is there behind the mirror will be all imaginary things that we'll be doing now. So what are we going to do in the step four? We are doing to do some extensions, imaginary extensions. Extend the reflected rays straight to the back of the mirror as dotted lines. You have to look at the reflected rays Place a ruler on the reflected rays and extend the reflected rays as a straight line to the opposite of the mirrors. Something like this. Like this. So what are you doing? You are taking your ruler. You are placing on the reflected ray R1 and R2. Make sure that these dotted lines and the purple and the red lines, they are straight lines. This thing which I am showing with my pointer it should be a straight line with the ruler. Now again what I am showing with my pointer it should be a straight line using your ruler. Right? Extend them as dotted line behind the mirror. Why are they shown as dotted lines? Because they are imaginary work. Nothing is there behind your mirror. It is just the wall. All these are your imaginary construction. That's why we are using dotted line. They are not real rays of light. They are imaginary right the point of intersection you find the point of intersection and that will be your image i so this just make a dot here that's your image i so this was your point object o that you started with and you have found the image i so the whole process of steps for the construction of the ray diagram it is a four step process and easy to remember steps. Step 1, incident rays. Step 2, normals. Step 3, reflected rays. Right? And you have to take care when you are drawing the reflected ray that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection in both the cases of the incident rays should be same. Then fourth step is your extension imaginary work. It is behind the mirror. You extend the reflected rays 
behind as a straight line, the point of intersection will be your image. It is a four step process, easy to remember and it will help you find the image of any point object. Practice it and you learn it. It is not so difficult to understand when you practice it, when you are working with your ruler and, and your protector, you'll see that you'll be having fun with it. You'll be enjoying this whole process of understanding the construction of ray diagram. So practice it more and more. It will be fun, believe me. So let us move on. Some of the properties of the mirror image. So now that we have found the image, let us understand some of the properties of the mirror image. The image is behind the mirror. When you see yourself in the mirror, your image is behind the mirror. Though behind the mirror, there is wall, nothing else. But you see that the image is inside. It's imaginary, right? Similarly, here also image is behind the mirror. And at what distance? At the same distance as the object is in front of the mirror. This is your property number one. Let us understand if the object is say, I am drawing a dotted line. If the object is say four, four centimeters from the mirror, the image will also be at four centimeters from the mirror. This is also 4 centimeters. This is what point number 1 says. The image is behind the mirror at the same distance as the object is in front of the mirror. The object distance from the mirror and the image distance from the mirror should be same. This is your property number 1. Let us come to property number 2. A line joining equivalent points on the image and the object passes through the mirror at right angle. So if you are joining the image and the object, if you draw a line which joins the image and the object, this line will be at 90 degrees. This line will be at 90 degrees with the mirror. So if you look at the picture 2 as well, you are given an object. Here the object is an arrow object. It is not a point object. So you are given an object. You are given the mirror. You see its image. If you join the corresponding points, corresponding points means this and this. A and B are corresponding points. A and A dash are corresponding points. And if you join A and A dash, this line is 90 degrees with the mirror. Let's call this point as B here. And on the image, if we call this point as B dash, if we join B and B dash, this line is at 90 degrees with the mirror. Similarly, if we can join C and C dash, something like this, this line will be at 90 degrees with the mirror. So whenever you find the image of an object, so some of the few things to quick check if your ray diagram is correct is, check the distance of the object from the mirror. It should be equal to the distance of the image from the mirror. If they are equal, your answer, your construction of the ray diagram is correct. Or if you can draw a line starting from the object to the image, draw a line joining the object to the image. If that line is perpendicular 90 degrees with the mirror, your construction of the ray diagram is correct. All right. Now the third property to understand, property number three, the image is the same size as the object. So if you look at this picture here, there is a toy giraffe in front of the mirror. The image size and the real object toy, they are both the same size. If you see your face in the mirror, the length of your body or the length of your face, the dimensions of your face will be exactly the same as the dimensions of your image. And then the fourth property, the image is laterally inverted. Laterally inverted means very, very important point to understand. Your right hand is the left hand of your image. Your left hand is the right hand of your image. Laterally inverted. This is called laterally 
inverted or if you can just hold a text in front of the mirror do you find the image readable can you read that image no you see that all the text all the alphabets are kind of inverted right that's called lateral inversion that happens when you click your selfies as well when you're clicking your selfies if there's something printed on your t-shirt the alphabets come inverted that whole thing is called scientifically it's called laterally inverted so whenever there is an image formed through a mirror the image is always laterally inverted these four points are very very important points for you to remember and they are very fun and easy to understand as well not so difficult right so let's move on to understand the real and the virtual image virtual means imaginary real means real so simple and easy to understand by the name itself so what are the real image real as the name says they are really real real means you can touch them right you can feel it it is real imaginary or virtual means you cannot touch it so the image which is formed inside the mirror of your body can you go inside the mirror and touch it if you cannot touch a mirror it is a virtual image image which is formed by the mirror you can never enter the mirror put your hand inside the mirror and you cannot touch it and feel it it is a virtual image whereas some images are real for example in cinema in cinema the image on the screen is screen is called a real image why if you stand in front of the screen the image falls on your body so in the cinema if you can just do not try doing it otherwise the public will not like it but this will happen if you go in front of the screen the image will fall on your body your skin can feel it the light is really falling on your body on your clothes on your hand that's a real image because you can feel it the light rays are really hitting you to create the image so in cinemas the image on the screen is called a real image because the rays from the projector focus or meet to form it right it is the actual intersection of the light which is creating the image virtual image the image in the mirror is the virtual image why because the rays appear to come from behind the mirror no rays actually pass inside the mirror no rays actually pass through the mirror the correct term through the it's a mistake mistake no rays actually pass through the mirror so let us understand why if you look at the construction of the ray diagrams here you're drawing some imaginary lines this side right these are imaginary lines that's not the actual rays which are going behind the mirror that's why this image is a virtual image you are doing some imaginary construction work virtual construction work that's why this image is a virtual image where you do not need to do any dotted line constructions there the image which is formed it's called a real image we'll understand more about real and virtual as we proceed through this lesson because real and virtual is a topic which keeps coming again and again and by the time you'll end this chapter you'll understand about real and virtual perfectly well so please do remember one of the finest thing and easy thing to remember real is something which you can feel because the light rays really come and hit you to create the image virtual is imaginary constructions you are doing imaginary lines you are creating and you cannot go and touch and feel the image it's somewhere you can see it but you cannot touch it right that's the easiest way to distinguish between the real and the virtual image so let's proceed with our lesson so in the next three slides i'm going to show you three questions you can do these questions you can pause the videos you can solve these questions and in the next video 
I'll be talking about the solution of these questions. So this is your question number one. Pause the screen and solve it, please. Here's your question number two. Pause the screen, solve it, please. Here's your question number three. Pause the screen and solve it. In the next video, we'll be talking about these three questions so that you understand all about the theory that you have learned in this chapter. And then once you understand this topic very well, we'll proceed to the next topic on light, which is refraction and reflective index. This is going to, our, to be our topic number 